All right, I think lighting, correcting the lighting in your image is one of the most important things you can do for your image. As a matter of fact, in my opinion, nothing else that you'll do to your image will look as good if you don't first correct the lighting in the image. Now, the, the camera that I use is a Canon EOS T2i Rebel. It takes pretty decent photos. The photos that I take outside in good lighting, of course, turn out much better than images that I take indoors with not so good lighting. So what I'm going to show you first is an image that I've taken outdoors, but even with those, even with good lighting, um, you still, it, you know, these images still require correction of the lighting in order for the image to look as good as it can. All right, so I have GIMP open. Let's go ahead and open up our test photo that we're going to use. And I'm going to open up two copies of it so that you can see a before and an after image. Okay, and let's open up one more copy of it. And I don't know if you realize this, but you can open up the same image multiple times in GIMP. It's not a problem. Okay, so what I'm going to show you is just the basics. And, and this is the process that I use in correcting the lighting in my images. The very first thing that I do with all my image processing, the first thing I do is correct the lighting in it. All right, so I'm going to right click over here and I'm going to go to color. And then I'm going to go to levels. And there's multiple ways of doing this. And I, I want to show you the process first that I use when I'm correcting the lighting in my image. And, and levels is the dialogue that I use to perform that in. I'm just going to show you the basics of this and then we will get more in depth and more in detail on this process in, in uh, future tutorials. Alright, so you've got these sliders over here and you see the channels are set for value. And up here, I've got selected Adjust Levels Perceptually Linear Histogram. Okay, and if I change that, Logarithmic, you see how that changes it? It's a lot easier for me to see the peaks and the valleys with the linear histogram, and I believe these are defaults when it brings it up. And then Adjust Levels Perceptually, and then Adjust Levels in Linear Light, and you can see that that changes. I like these nice smooth contours where I can see the peaks and the valleys. All right, so you've got this little arrow over here, and this this is your this is your black to the far left over here, and and you can see that the arrow is black. Over here, you can see the arrow is white, and this is your white range. Okay, so all with the slider all the way over, that is your that's your white range, the top end of your white range, the bottom end of your black range. And then you, this gray one here in the center is your midtones. If you grab that one and you move it to the left, you can see that the image is getting washed out. So what you're doing is you're decreasing the range of pixels that are black and increasing the range of pixels that are white. If you move it to the right toward the, the, toward the white end of the spectrum, you can see the image is getting really dark. So you're increasing the range at which the pixels are black and decreasing the range at which they're white. So when I correct my images, I correct them not only um, with the white, white pixel range and the black pixel range, but also with the midtones, which is this center slider here. Now, there's a reset button down here that is your friend. So if I just get it completely messed up and I want to start over, um, I, this reset button down here, I call it my parachute button. So if I've completely damaged the plane and I need to bail out of it, this is my parachute button. So I hit reset and it goes back to the original settings. And I've had to do that a few times. You get better with it as time goes on. The more, more photos that you correct, you'll, you'll know just by looking at the photo, you'll know how to go about correcting that image to get a very good result. But when you first start out, you might want this parachute button down here to start over from scratch. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is the image looks to me like it's a little washed out. Actually, it looks a little hazy. Now, this was a 
fairly bright day the sun is in front of them you can see the reflections on the water so the lighting was actually pretty good for this photograph all right so the first thing i want to do is i want to increase the range of the dark of the black pixels i want to darken it up a little bit and i want to decrease the white pixel range just a little bit so you see right here where you've got this gap you've got this little white pixel here and then you've got this gap and then you have the slope that comes up okay so if you read documentation on how to correct histograms and i have one of the things that will tell you is you need to move this to your peak you need to move this to your peak right here the white pixels see where this peak is sometimes that works out really well and sometimes it doesn't so you can give that a shot to begin with most of the time i usually have to have it offset from that peak one side or the other to get the lighting in the image the way i like it okay so and then you see where this curve stops right here well the documentation i've read says okay if we're correcting histograms in your photos lighting in your photos then you should move your black over here and that doesn't look too bad well what do you do with the mid-range here you know and and then once you get your you get your black range set the way you want it you get your white range the way you want it and then you know play around with the setting on the mid-range your gamma in your image and see what is most pleasing to you now i think i like that right there I don't see anything that looks too washed out. I don't see anything that looks too dark. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say, okay, I want that setting. All right, so now let's go back and compare what we just did with the lighting correction in this image with the original image that was that's still untouched. So here's the before image, and here's the after image. Do you see what a difference that is? In the, in, the, in the quality of the image, just correcting the lighting. And that's why I say that the first thing that I do with my image before I do anything else is I correct the lighting. Before I, before I adjust the pixels per inch or the DPI or anything else, the color or the contrast, any of that, I always go in to the, hist the lighting histogram that, that um, levels dialogue that we were just in and and do a correction on the lighting to get it to where i think it looks the best and so before doesn't that compare to compared to our lighting correction doesn't that look almost like there's a fog it's a, almost looks foggy to me compared with the the corrected lighting okay so this information should be enough to get you started on your lighting correction of your images I suggest that you do that before you do anything else to your image this works out really really well for me and so I always do this before I do anything else now in future tutorials we'll go through the rest of the dialogue there there was a, there's a lot of features of that dialogue for that and I'll bring it back up so that you can see it colors levels so if you go back in here and you look at that, there's a lot of different options here. And, and one of them is value. You know, if you need to, you can also adjust the color balance of your image in the same dialogue, which I think is absolutely fantastic. You have a clamp for input, you have a clamp for output, and you can actually use um, um, a, a, a pixel selector to select what you want to be the darkest pixel in the image, what you want to use for your gray point or your mid-range, and what you want to use for your white pixel. So there's a lot of options here, and you can also go in and actually set it with numbers. You don't have to use the sliders. You can actually go in and set it by numbers as well. But we'll go through that. I'll show you how all that works in a, in a future tutorial. But right now, this, this is the only, th these are the features that I use in the levels dialog. I don't use anything else. This is what I use to correct the lighting in my images, but I want to go through everything for you. So stay tuned for that. Um, this will definitely help you get the lighting corrected in your images. All right, so that's a wrap on this episode, and I will see you in the next episode.